Pickle. I don't know if you checked your watch or your calendar. Mm-hmm. But it's Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Here on Math Tuesday on Texas Football Today, we like to dive into the numbers. Uh, take a look at some of the numbers that help shape what football across the state of Texas is all about. Today, we're going to take a look at teams that were really good in 2021. Mm-hmm. And we spent a lot of time. We're at the point now where we're kind of closing the book on the 2021 season. We're kind of done breaking it down. I think it's kind of been broken down to death. But now we are going to take a look forward to 2022. Of course, we're working on the 2022 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. This is Texas a fact. Football.com slash subscribe. Uh, and so we're, we're obviously previewing the Texas high school football season within it. And one of the real factors, I think, that a lot of people pay attention to and what something we use as far as helping to project what teams are going to do in the future is is two two big p- pieces of the formula. Mm-hmm. One is what have you done lately? Yes. The most accurate measure of future success is past success. Uh, there is a reason that Katie's really good every year mm-hmm. because they've they, 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 they build on it. They build on it. Build. And part of it is uh, that they have great players, and they always have great players there at Katie. Part yes. of it is they always have great coaching at Katie. Mm-hmm. And also part of it is culture and tradition and things like that. Those types of things matter. Another thing that we pay attention to, and one of the big things that like when we lay out our rankings, we say the ranking, the team, the record, and the number of starters returning mm-hmm. from last year's team. Now, that's not everything. It's part of a whole puzzle. But Mm -hmm. they are, I would say, pretty decent indicators of what kind of experience you have coming back and what kind of talent you have coming back, Mm -hmm. what kind of known commodities. Of course, there are going to be players who didn't start last year who are going to be household names by the end of the season. Mm -hmm. There will be those players. But if you have those known commodities, you're a little bit easier to project. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and so, even if even if you were a one in nine team, if you have ninety percent of your team coming back, you can assume yeah. you'll probably be a little bit better I just think, from experience. Right. I think that there is an assumption that, and there and the 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 history bears this out, that having that type of experience tends to bode well in the win column. Yep. Moving forward, and so here's what I did: is I took a look at all of the teams that won ten games or more last season uh i think we've i think we can agree i don't know if we can agree maybe we can't uh that if you won 10 games in a season you had a good season yes is that is that fair yes were there any bad if, 10 win se- teams no if we're gonna set a industry standard if you will right there i think 10 is is great 10 wins is good because some I, some teams like an allen if they win 10 games and that's it then they're gonna be disappointed and some programs look at 10 wins as the best thing ever but regardless it's still a good season it's still a good season i think that's a decent metric a decent and it's a nice round number uh it either means i mean worst case scenario it means that you're like four pin marshall i hate to pick on four pin marshall mm-hmm. team finished 10 and 0 lost in the first round of playoffs they had an unbeaten regular season yep. now i don't think coach marshall is is very is very uh or coach williams rather is very happy with <laughs> that's like coach marshall, coach marshall at williams high school <laughs> no, coach williams at, at, at marshall at four pin williams pleased with it but I think that any way you slice it, 10 wins is pretty good. And then I looked at what they've got coming back as far as returning starters are concerned. So let's first take a look at the teams that have the most coming back from last year's uh, last year's teams. And and I think at the top it might surprise you. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the Benjamin Mustangs. Benjamin. Now, now one of the things, see the asterisks there, uh, that is a, a six-man team. So they could only have a maximum of 12 starters, right? It's just the way it is. Benjamin brings back every single player from a team that went 10-1 and last year and is very clearly on the rise. Benjamin is a team to keep an eye on in the six-man ranks. A private school comes in next in Lubbock Trinity Christian. Lubbock Trinity Christian uh, was an outstanding uh, private school program. Uh, and they bring back uh, 19 starters uh, from last year's team. This is a team that, uh, in in the private school ranks, you should certainly pay attention to. They they uh, were a Division three state finalist uh, a year ago before you losing to Cypress uh, Christian. But they bring back 19 starters. Then you get into the 11 man ranks and the UIL ranks. Columbus. It, a pair of teams, Columbus and Centerville, each won 10-plus games. Centerville went 12-2, went all the way to the regional final. 
Um, and they've got they've got both of them have 18 starters back, nine starters on each side of the ball coming back. I think it figures to, to that that those two teams probably going to be pretty good in 2022. Uh, then you've got a whole mess of teams that are coming in that won 10 games that have 17 starters coming back. There's a couple I want to spotlight here. You can mm-hmm. see them. One of them you might mention, you might notice, is the team in the gold there. Yep. South Oak Cliff. South Oak Cliff was obviously the state champion a year ago, and there is a reasonable argument to be made that they may be even better this year. They bring back a ton, including nine starters on that defense. Uh, this is a team that's going to be loaded. Uh, within their own region is Lovejoy. Lovejoy mm-hmm. was a team, those 12-2. and two, Remember, that was a team we were talking about as potentially the Alito, the Alito Slayer uh, heading into 2021. Well, now they bring back 10 starters from offense, yeah. including guys like Jackson Lavender leading that offense. Uh, Marlin also brings back 17 starters. Marlin's going to be absolutely loaded. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a sleeper, and spoiler alert, I wrote it about it in the 6A preview, I'm big on Jersey Village. Yep. I think Jersey Village may be flying under people's radar, but that is a team that I think is going to make some noise, and not just because of the starters they have coming back, but the way that the, the way they battled last year, I think they're flying under people's radar. Maybe it's because they're a Cypher ISD program that doesn't start with Cy, right. but they are a program to keep an eye on. The other ones, Glen Rose, Edna, Leander Rouse, quarterback Mason Shorb, uh, and Little River Academy, the Swole Bees, all bring back 17 starters from last year's teams that won at least 10 games so these are teams that I think I think in a vacuum you would look at them and say all right this is a list full of contenders Mm -hmm. a list full of teams that we expect to do big things in 2022 of course just because you don't have returning starters coming back is not some sort of death sentence no doesn't mean that you should just not go out there and try to you know play the season because Mm -hmm. chances are these programs if you won 10 games that means you're doing something right that said, there were a number of teams that won 10 games a year ago that got pretty wiped by graduation. Uh, and, 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 and these are the ones that, that are, are kind of on my radar. Let's talk about Strawn. This is astonishing. Even though it's a six-man program, it's still astonishing. Strawn is the defending 1A Division II state champions. Yes. Uh, of course, they've got one of the greatest coaches of all time in Dwayne Lee there. Um, they were going to have just one starter coming back on each side of the ball. Uh, and it was going to be Grayson Rigdon. Which was the guy. <laughs> Grayson Rigdon, uh, who was the M- uh, the Division II MVP as a freshman last year. He was the uh, title game, I believe, offensive MVP mm-hmm. uh, in 1A Division II. He was the best player in six-man football, pretty much hard stop. Well, now he has transferred to Benjamin, mm-hmm. the team we talked about in the, in the previous one, uh, because his, his son or his, his father, father was hired as the head coach there at Benjamin. So Strawn, the defending state champs, bring back – Zero starters from last year's team. Now, you doubt Dwayne Lee at your own peril. Mm -hmm. He's going to have them boys ready to go, but that's certainly something to keep an eye on uh, there in the 1A Division II ranks. Frisco Liberty was a team that went went 10-2 a year ago. They get completely wiped offensively. Part of that is that Caldrick Luster, their quarterback, their superstar quarterback, transferred to McKinney. Mm-hmm. So they just bring back two starters on defense, and that's it. Manville's used to this. Manville's always very senior heavy, uh, and it doesn't stop them from being great. A 10-3 and three year uh, last year for Kevin Hall's squad, they bring back just three starters uh, from last year's team. We're going to hear from one of the guys who graduated, Justin Medlock, coming up from the moment. A pair of six-man teams there, one of the UIL ranks, one of the prep school ranks. Motley County, who is a team that Strawn beat in the title game, uh, they bring back just two starters mm-hmm. uh, from last year's team, one on each side of the ball. Same in the private school ranks with Waco Live Oak. That was another defending state champ uh, there in the private school ranks, the six-man level. They bring back just two starters on the defense, and that's all. Uh, then Austin Bowie, uh, a 10-win team a year ago, fantastic for the Bulldogs. They bring back just four starters. Tom Ball, one of the great stories in Texas high school football, a Cinderella run to the state semifinal. And they lost the guy. Uh, they lose Cale Hellams, who's off to Army. Uh, but this is a team that, that, especially on the defensive side, gets pretty much wiped uh, as far as starters are concerned. Um, with uh, Kirk Martin's squad there at Colleyville Heritage, 12-2 uh, and two, uh, a year ago, they are bringing back just four starters. Down at the bottom, Fall City, a, a state finalist from a year ago. Uh, of course, they beat Martin the semifinal in a bit of an, an upset. They bring back just two starters on, on either side of the ball. And then there's Water Valley. Now, Water Valley is an interesting case here. Mm-hmm. Water Valley d- only brings back four starters, and you might be saying, well, that that's that doesn't seem like very many. But one thing to remember is that they are transitioning from six-man to 11-man. So if this was a team 
that was bringing back four starters at the six-man ranks, you'd be like, oh, okay, oh, okay. it's less yeah. than average, less than you'd like, but not terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, so Water Valley does get kind of a bit of an asterisk here. Like, we don't really know what to deal with them. They're obviously do with them. They're obviously dealing with a, a, a transition of their own as far as scheme is concerned. Mm-hmm. Which, at that point, you might look at it as, like, a good thing yeah. because – if you're going to play 11 man, you can kind of teach young guys from the start. Obviously, there's junior high programs and stuff, but it's not as intensive as varsity ball. You can hit the refresh. Button. Yeah. Uh, you know, you hit the reset, and so. Um, it's an interesting. So phase. those are so these are these are programs that were obviously excellent in 2022, mm-hmm. that are going to be a little bit light on experience early. Now, now look, as we mentioned, the the teams that have past success tend to have future success. Mm-hmm. So a team like Strawn, I'm not worried about Strawn going one and nine. No. She's not going to happen. Um, but they certainly, I think what's what's interesting is that they certainly have holes to fill. Same with places like Manville. Uh, but, but, but these are programs that are used to having holes to fill. Yep. And they've just gone out there and done it year in and year out. Uh, so there you go. There's a look at some of the best teams from 2021 uh, that bring back the most and the least uh, from last uh, from uh, going into 2022. That is this episode of Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe. 